kill a tornado just by... If you don't move, you got to get out of the way or go below ground or you're going to die. No rest for the weary as another round of tornadoes slam the nation's midsection again. It puts fear in those already suffering so much. Wicked weather continues to be our top story tonight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Mickle. Welcome to INN News. The hits keep on coming. Later in this newscast, we'll have more on just how deadly this season has been. First, the latest storm to cause havoc. Several Midwestern states are cleaning up after a string of tornadoes last night. 15 people are dead in Kansas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma after 36 tornado touchdowns. The twisters tore through homes and businesses. Oklahoma's governor says it's one of the worst storms she's ever seen. I've, I've been in office 20 years. I've been through a lot of these uh, natural disasters, but I've never seen this many in a short period of time. At least three people were killed in Arkansas after a large and powerful twister touchdown in the western part of that state. This is video of the damage in Denning, Arkansas. Much of that small town is gone. That same system gave quite a scare to people in Joplin, Missouri. Already dealing with the aftermath of a deadly storm, more than 120 are dead, 700 hurt after a wicked F5 tornado blasted 200 mile an hour winds on Sunday. It was the eighth deadliest tornado on record. 1,500 people are still unaccounted for. Teams have been picking through the piles of rubble with their search dogs. We're basically just doing a, a street by street sweep looking for any sign of a body. And everything came down on top of me, like I said, and I stood up and I looked out and I saw all of this. The president says he will travel to Joplin this weekend to view the damage and offer whatever comfort he can to those who've lost everything. With Mother Nature being particularly harsh this year, lawmakers want to make sure FEMA has enough money to pay for the many people who desperately need it. The House panel has voted to add more money to the Homeland Security spending bill for this fiscal year. The amendment gives FEMA an extra $1 billion to cover natural disasters in Alabama, Louisiana, and Missouri. In, in total, this bill provides $1.7 billion for Homeland Security first responder grants. Of that, the bill provides $1 billion for the secretary to provide two programs that address the highest need and risk. Let me repeat, that is for the highest need and the risk at the secretary's discretion. Anyone who needs help from FEMA because of tornado damage or flooding can call 800-621-FEMA. That's 800-621-3362. Or you can apply online at FEMA.gov. Speaking of flooding, what's happening on the Mississippi River has been a bit overshadowed by recent storms, but it is still a real mess for those living along there. Take a look at this, a stretch of railroad crossing, uh, a spillway has been damaged by flood propelled debris, a large hole, missing railroad ties and loose pilings are the result of garbage washing in with the Mississippi. The damaged tracks caused an Amtrak train to get stuck when it tried to cross. Inspections have been ongoing since water started rising and the track had just been given the thumbs up. Glad that the train not going over there. There's a chance that we might get hurt. Amtrak is busing passengers the rest of the way. Crews hope to have the bridge repaired within a couple of days. Well, more planes are grounded by a moving ash cloud. Plus, who's now eyeing the top job for the International Monetary Fund as we head overseas? Time for global news now. Suicide bombers have targeted a police building in Pakistan, killing four officers and hurting at least 30 others. Police say the blast from the suicide bombers explosive filled pickup truck was so powerful it flattened the station house. The Pakistani Taliban has claimed responsibility for the attack. The fourth since Osama bin Laden was killed. The disruption caused by Iceland's volcanic eruption appears to be improving, but it's still causing trouble in some parts of northern Europe. The cloud is over northern Germany where it's closed two airports and it's heading toward Poland. The closures will affect at least 600 flights in Germany by the end of the day. French Finance Minister Christine Lagarde announced her bid to replace Dominique Strauss-Kahn as head of the International Monetary Fund today. If she's successful, she will become the first woman to hold the IMF's top job. Reports suggest Lagarde has already won the backing of several major players. In London, it's day two of the U.S. President's state visit to Britain. Barack Obama held key talks at Number 10 Downing Street with Prime Minister David Cameron and Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg, where they discussed a wide range of issues, from Afghanistan and Libya to uprisings in the Arab world. 
That's your global news now. The Space Shuttle Endeavour crew's third spacewalk happened today. Two astronauts spent about six and a half hours outside the International Space Station. The two spacewalkers completed some setup work on a module in preparation for a power and data fixture that will be placed inside. There has been some improvement in the housing market, but the foundation is still shaky. Jenny Wurzberger gets back in business. A mixed report is out on new home sales in the United States. The Commerce Department says sales of new houses were up in April for the second month in a row, but they remain near the lowest levels on record. The April rate this year is down more than 23% from April 2010. New home sales peaked in July 2005 when the annual sales rate hit 1.4 million. Barnes & Noble announces a new Nook. The new device will be a lighter, slimmer, cheaper version of its e-reader. It will cost about $140. It will feature a 6-inch touchscreen and can hold up to 1,000 digital books. The new Nook will be available June 10th. Barnes & Noble is now taking pre-orders. Deal-a-day websites like Groupon, Ideally, and Living Social. That blast email offers for deep discounts are expanding fiercely. The sites are expected to generate $2.7 in revenue this year, more than double last year. Many merchants see the sites as a way to hook new customers, but skeptics wonder if the boom is reminiscent of the dot-com bust. For Back to Business, I'm Jenny Wurzberger. Well, the best part of waking up will cost you more. The maker of Folgers is raising the price of its coffee products by 11 percent. J.M. Smucker says the price hike is needed to offset high coffee bean costs. Other brands have recently raised their prices as well, including Starbucks, Sara Lee, and Kraft. Soaring gas prices have many of us reevaluating the way we travel. Biking not only eases our pain at the pump, it's also a green choice. As Nana Okawa reports from our Reno, Nevada affiliate, bikes could soon be an economic benefit to the Silver State as well. Analysts say bike tourism is rising and northern Nevada is trying to grab a bite of it. Some believe Nevada can become a destination point for biking, potentially bringing a lot of money into the state. There's also an economic benefit. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that come to northern Nevada to recreate and they come here because the air is clean and we have a lot of bike facilities and walking and hiking facilities. And so that, that's very, very important to the economy. Officials say to bring bike tourism, it has to be easy to bike around northern Nevada. RTC is preparing with their master plan. Two projects have just been signed off. What you see on the maps is about 200 additional bicycle miles, bicycle facility miles, and that's everything from a bike lane to a separated path to just more of a route where it's kind of a share the road situation. A plan that may take 30 years to complete, but is a start to going green while trying to bring some money to the state. I think for me, just getting on the bike and going somewhere, it's the ease of it and, and the fact that you feel refreshed once you're there and, and you feel like you're doing uh, something a little bit good for the environment. Nana Okawa reporting for INN News. Well, who wouldn't want to live a long, healthy life? I think we all know by now there's no fountain of youth, anti-aging pill, or silver bullet that will help us live longer. But Dr. Malika Marshall found five easy steps that might do the trick. While scientists race against time for an anti-aging breakthrough, chances are most of us won't live to see it. Average life expectancy is 77.9 years. Yet research shows there are five things that you could do to get you well into your 80s and maybe even beyond. A healthy diet. Keep weight in check and diseases at bay by following the new dietary guidelines. Reach for fresh produce, whole grains, non- or low-fat dairy, as well as seafood. Exercise. It may prevent and delay diseases like cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Break a sweat at least 30 minutes on most days. Extinguish smoking. It's the leading cause of preventable death. Limit alcohol use. That means no more than two drinks a day for men and one a day for women. Proactive medical care. Your primary care doctor is your biggest asset. Not only do they perform physical exams, they also help manage any chronic conditions. So dare to be 100. Start living a healthy life today. I'm Dr. Malika Marshall. Well, with Memorial Day just around the corner and beach vacations in sight, you're going to want to protect your skin. The Environmental Protection Agency has developed a program called SunWise, which aims to teach children and parents how to prevent sun overexposure. Here are four simple steps to make sure you don't get burned this summer. Slip on a shirt. Slop on sunscreen. SPF 15 and above is best. Slap on a hat and wrap on sunglasses. Yes, even your eyes can burn. Also, try to avoid the sun at its peak between 10 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon. 
Well, if you're grilling out this weekend, you can turn down the heat and still be safe. The USDA says whole cuts of meat no longer need to be cooked to an internal temperature of 160 degrees. Now, pork steaks roast in chops are fine to eat cooked to 145 degrees. However, experts advise you need to wait three minutes before carving or cutting. That wait time allows the internal temperature of the meat to rise slightly and also allows the juices in the meat to thicken. This change does not apply now to ground meats. Those should still be cooked at 160 degrees. The safe cooking temperature for all poultry also remains at 165. The devastating tornado that killed 120 people in Missouri this week, plus the deaths from last night, puts the U.S. on track for a record-breaking year. Nearly 500 have died so far this year. The figure could escalate as rescue workers continue digging through rubble in Joplin. The deadliest tornado year on record is 1925, which had 794 deaths. That is also the year the deadliest tornado on record happened. The tri-state tornado struck on March 18, 1925. It killed 695 people along its 219 mile long path across southeastern Missouri, southern Illinois, and southern Indiana. That's the deadliest and longest path tornado on record in the U.S. It lasted about three and a half hours. Cities all across the country are doing what they can to help the people in Joplin, Missouri. Adam Kruger from our Omaha affiliate KPTM has more on how people there are making a difference. I've never seen anything like it. People are parking on the interstate. Red Cross worker Danielle Schlegemilch has had a much busier month than most of us. I was at the Mapleton tornado, a tornado in Arkansas, and then I was down in Alabama. So in the past month, I've been to more tornadoes than I have in my life. I got debris on the ground right here. I got debris on the ground. Once again, lives have been turned upside down with the most recent disaster down in Joplin, Missouri. And once again, Omahans have jumped at the chance to help. They want to drive their cars down there today and they want to help working, but the realistic thing is you can't just drive into a disaster. You have to be able to have some kind of a credential to get into a disaster zone these days. And with the Red Cross, we can train you for free, empower you, and then pay for you to get down there. Even if you aren't a medical expert or can't do any heavy lifting, you can still help. We always say there's a place for everyone at the Red Cross. If you are willing to just literally go down and help, we have people who help um, college students, even high school students. We just have, as long as you're 18 years old, you can go out and help. So we have people who work in shelters and help serve meals, to help driving trucks, to going out in the neighborhoods. If you have a degree or even if you just, you know, you're over 18 and you have the passion to go and help people and you're a caring person, the Red Cross will find somewhere for you to help. Danielle uses her experience as a plea for volunteers. They just will forever be in my heart because those people have gone through so much and to be there for them in that like huge moment of need just instantly bonds you with people and they could be strangers one minute and the next minute you're hugging and <laughs> crying together so it's just one of those experiences that you're, you're never going to forget. Adam Kruger reporting for INN News. You can check out redcross.org to find out about volunteering opportunities in your area. You can also find out how to donate money to help the folks in Joplin. Or you can do that by texting the word Red Cross to 90999. Again, that's Red Cross 90999. Well, Walmart says it's pledging a million dollars to help tornado victims. The retail giant is directing truckloads, water, food, and other basic supplies to the area. Its store in Joplin was significantly damaged when that tornado blew through. An unknown number of people were killed and hurt at the store. None, though, were Walmart workers. This is one high school reunion a California man is very excited about. Jesse Matos accidentally flushed his class ring down the toilet 72 years ago. He figured it was gone forever and didn't give it a second thought. But recently, a city worker in Matos' old hometown, more than 200 miles away, found the ring in a backed up sewer line. The worker tracked him down and gave Matos the ring back to him, and Matos says it came at the right time. So I had just lost my wife, 69 years, and that was a pretty low blow. But this came along and it was a kind of a ray of sunshine. And, and going through all that effort to find out who it was, I thought that was pretty amazing. The ring is engraved with the letters JTM. The man who found the ring looked up a yearbook from 1938 and found Jesse Matos was the only person with those initials. 
He started the search from there until he found Matos. Wow. I'm Mike Mickle. From all of us here at INN, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow.